Vacuum cleaners, perhaps the ultimate labour-saving device. They've been around for over a hundred years, but none are held in quite as high regard as Henry. This friendly face is nearly 40 years old, and an army of 10 million Henrys can be found in homes, hotels and offices around the world. There's very little that you can do to upset a Henry. You can use him very, very robustly. You can use him all over in lots of different applications and he'll still come out smiling. Henry and his multicoloured family are made at the pneumatics factory in Somerset by a team led by Stuart Cochrane. I've worked here for 10 years and I was amazed when I joined that all the main components that we use for the Henry are made in the factory here. Most of Henry's 85 components are made on site from injection molded plastic, which requires a plentiful supply of raw materials. Well, we're here at the back of the factory, which is right at the start of the process of us making the plastic components that go into the main bits of the Henry machine. So the big silos, and we've got nine silos around us, um, hold up to 30 tonnes of material. Um, and all of the material is in pellet form, and it's then transported into the factory in uh, vacuum pipes and are distributed to all the machines where we're making all of the different components from the Henry. And we use about 5,000 tonnes of material in the factory every year. The majority is a plastic called polypropylene. It's a tough, versatile material that's used to create Henry's red body and accessories. The pellets are stored in the bulk silos until they're called for at various points around the factory. The material has come from the big silos outside and it looks like this, these pellets, and it comes through the pipe uh, to the manifold where it is then distributed to the rest of the machine through the different pipes right round the factory. The white plastic pellets can be coloured to produce parts in any of the six colours used across the range. When the pellets come into the factory, we mix them with a master batch to give them the particular colour that we need for the product. And then they get um, transferred into our injection moulding machines um, to make the product like the drum that's being made behind me. The pellets are sent to the 39 injection moulding machines around the factory where they're heated and squeezed into precision-engineered steel moulds. The moulds are held together using up to 600 tonnes of pressure to ensure the molten plastic sets at exactly the right shape. The injection moulders run 24 hours a day and can make up to a million mouldings each week. Once cooled, robotic arms remove the components and drop them onto a network of conveyor belts ready for assembly. This is the very start of the assembly process where we have seven production lines. We have about 80 staff here working on a double shift system and they make about 4,500 Henrys a day, which equates to about 20,000 a week or a million a year. The black head of Henry is the most complicated part. It contains the motor and electrical switches all made by an in-house team of crimpers and splicers. The first part to be assembled is the cable reel. We're bringing together some of the mouldings that we've produced uh, from our injection moulding machines and making the reel a top that goes into the top of the Henry and winds the cable on to the Henry, which a lot of people know Henry for. And you buy the product with it wound in, so we have to wind the cable in here. The 10 metre long cable gives Henry extra reach over his shorter range rivals. So this is the um, main bit of the Henry head. It's the sort of internal workings of the Henry head. So we've got some contact rings at the top so that we can put the reeler and the cable on top. And some electrical connections at the bottom so that we can do the motor. And the switches and the light that shows that the uh, machine is connected to the main. We put a cover, a switch cover over that uh, to protect the contacts. And then we finish up by putting the Henry cover onto um, that so we can transport it all together and ship it to the line effectively. The 620 watt motor needs to be powerful enough to suck up the estimated 1.5 million skin cells we shed every hour, many of which end up in our carpets which researchers say 
contain up to 4,000 times more bacteria than the seat of a loo. But of course, Henry's staying positive, as next door, a robot is sponge painting that famous smile. I think the smiley face is great because everybody recognises the product and knows that it's a Henry. And then if, if you're using it in a commercial situation, maybe you're on your own while you're cleaning and it becomes a friend who's working alongside you rather than just the machine that you're using. First imagined by company founder and owner Chris Duncan, Henry's smiling face was originally meant to cheer up office cleaners working unsocial hours. But his reliability and efficiency, not to mention a positive attitude, soon made him a hit in the home too. Over the years, the Henry family has grown to include over a dozen variations, offering souped up motors, bigger capacities, and even a wet vac function. Back on the assembly line, Henry's classic red drum is taking shape. So this is where we assemble the drum, ready to go into the final assembly hall. So we put on the casters, the wheels, and then we put in the two layers of filtration, which is the bag and the Tritex filter. The filtration process is good because the filter helps the bag to work more efficiently and also there's three layers of material in the bag that allows the um, air to keep moving through while trapping all the dirt. Oh, the smile gets put on at the same time. The six litre capacity lets Henry pick up more dirt and debris than many a house proud owner would care to admit. A flexible hose will connect the drum to an aluminium handle known as the wand, which is also made in-house. So we start off with a blank piece of metal and we put a hole in it and we have to bend it like this one. And the hole in it is for the volume control. And it all makes sense when we make the straight piece as well to put it together and everybody would recognize the Henry vacuum cleaner. But our Henry isn't a one-trick pony. So here we have what we call our five-piece kit. So it's the kit of tools that goes into the Henry to help do lots of different jobs um, with your Henry. We used to um, have it manufactured in the Far East, but we decided to manufacture it in-house so that we had control over the production. What we call the crevice tool, which is really good for getting into um, little spaces, like in the arms of your armchair or down the seats of your car. An upholstery brush um, that uh, you can do things like mattresses with it without the brush. And then, again, things like sofas when you uh, attach the brush to the holder. A, a dusting brush with horsehair in there that's really good for dusting. Now I use the soft dusting brush with the volume control of the wand open to dust things like Lego models so that you can take the dust off without sucking up all the bits. And all these years, I've been dusting my Lego by hand. The final assembly hall is where the head, the drum, the wand and accessories come together. This is the bit where right across the business we've been making lots of small components that you might not recognise as being part of the Henry. They all come together on these production lines and are put together by the team here. We have an automatic screwdriver that does the seven screws up that holds the Henry head together and a robot to pick the head up and put it onto Henry's drum. We built this entire production line ourselves and it not only improves the quality of making Henry but also reduces the work content for the operators so it makes it less stressful for the operators to work on the line. I think there's always a happy smiling face going down our line so it, it, uh, I, I think that always looks good. Once the head is attached to the drum, each unit is thoroughly tested to make sure it's working properly. We've designed an automatic test station where every one of our products goes through a performance and an electrical test. We also take a photograph of the Henry to check that it's got the right face, it's the right colour, it's got the right printing on it, and that it's performing as we expect it to perform. And every one is built to last. It's very robust. There are a lot of old Henrys that go beyond their life cycle that we can repair in-house and, and give people spare parts for it. And that toughness is down to a brutal testing regime. Next door, team of Henrys are being poked, prodded and generally mistreated for thousands of hours. We put it through an enormous amount of testing and development to make sure that the machine is robust and capable of um, standing up to anything that any user can throw at it. So these brushes have swept almost 200,000 times already. 
and the poor little things are still smiling. Back on the assembly line, the completed Henrys are nearly ready for dispatch. So this is the end of the production line and we're making two machines every minute and the production line picks up the Henry and puts it into his box and then we pack all the kits and accessories that go with the Henry into the box. So off the top of my head, we make two machines a minute off the line, which is 120 an hour. So over our two shifts, it's almost 2,000 a day off this line alone. I'm really proud that Henry's made in the UK. It's really nice to um, run a factory that provides jobs for people and produce an iconic product that lots of people recognise around the world. And don't forget all those winning smiles.